Welcome back to Diamond Painting 101. I know in the last episode I told you that we would be putting drills on a canvas soon, but it turns out I lied. In this video, I'm going to show you how I prep my canvases to get ready to start a project, as well as some other ways that you can do it, because as I've said before, there's no real right or wrong way to diamond paint. So let's get started. I've got my containers here that I'm going to put the drills in. I've got my drill pack with the inventory sheet. This is a super cute Wonder Woman. It's a small diamond painting, so this is actually one that I'm going to use to travel with, so it'll be very mobile for me. I have a box that I'll keep it in that I can use as a work surface in the car. Um, or if I'm sitting on the couch at home instead of here at my craft desk. So I've got all of that, and then here I've got a marker, an X-Acto knife, uh, a straight edge, I have some washi tape, and what I'm going to do, I don't like working with this backing intact on my canvas. It gets folded and bent and creased. Uh, it loses its adhesion um, with you constantly peeling it up and then putting it back down. It just doesn't work for me having it in a big space or in a one big piece. A lot of people will just peel up a section and as they work they just peel up a little bit more. You can do that. Uh, a lot of people will peel it up and fold it back. You can do that too. I don't like having that flappy piece of paper on my project. I like having things a little bit neater. Another thing that you can do is peel it up in the section that you're going to work on and then if it's the paper backing, you can just tear it right off. I don't like doing that either because sometimes when you tear it the paper thins out and it will leave some on the sticky canvas uh, that you then have to like scrub off with a baby wipe. So for me that's just another kind of fiddly pain in the butt thing. So what I do for my canvases is I actually score them with an X-Acto knife. Um, to do that I just measure how big that paper is. It helps if I put the ruler on the correct way. So this is eight inches across. So I'll probably only score this once at the four inch mark, which I'm going to mark it at the top. And at the bottom. Now, Sharpie marker doesn't actually stick on this paper very well because it's a waxed paper, but that's okay because I only need it to stay here for a couple minutes while I score it. So this direction, it measures at 10 and a quarter. I don't need to be exact here. It doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to go at 5 and an eighth-ish. One there. and one there. So then I just lay my ruler down, measuring up those marks. Now again, this is just how I do it. If you don't want to go to the fuss of, of scoring your paper, you don't have to. You can tear it, uh, you can fold it, you can peel it back and stick it back down, totally up to you. There's no right or wrong way, this is just the way I do it. So I've got my ruler lined up on my mark, I'm just going to take my X-Acto knife and I'm not putting very much pressure down at all. You can see I haven't put anything under this to protect my tabletop. I don't want to cut through my canvas, I just want to cut through my paper. So I'm just lining it up against my ruler and lightly went off my ruler, scoring it. Even if I haven't cut all the way through, it's fine. As long as I get a, a score that I can kind of tear it down that straight line, I'm happy. So I've got that one through, and now I'm just going to turn it 
and do it in the other direction. Now, if you've got a bigger canvas, you can cut it in as many section as you, sections as you like. You can make the sections as big or as small as you like. I like bigger sections because I don't like changing my color constantly. My daughter tends to score it in smaller sections. Uh, she likes completing the little bits a little easier. So now you can see I actually marked the canvas a little bit right here. I don't, well, maybe you can see. It's okay, it didn't go through. Even if I cut through the adhesive, it's not going to hurt the canvas. I just don't want to cut through the canvas. So it's a light cutting to get through that paper. And now when I'm working on this, I can work on it one section as a at a time. I actually save these pieces of backing paper. I've got like a drawer full of them. And I'll use them as I'm working a section to keep my hand from getting stuck to the sticky. So even when I pull these off, they don't get thrown away. If I don't finish a whole section at one time, I can go back and stick it down in a and it works to keep the canvas nice and clean and clear. So I've got that done. Um, the other thing that you're going to want to have on hand, and you can do this at the beginning or you can do it as you're working it, is some washi tape. Um, painter's tape also works. Um, you could probably use masking tape, maybe scotch tape, I'm not sure. I like the washi tape because it's relatively low tax, so getting it back off is not a problem. When they put the adhesive on these canvases, it actually, let's see if you can see it with the, my lighting, it actually goes past the edge of where the drills go. So on this side, there's maybe an in, eighth of an inch of overlap of that sticky. On this side, there's a little less. So to avoid putting my hand in that sticky when I'm working on a canvas, I use washi tape around the edges to just keep it clean and keep my hand out of it. I don't do this though at the beginning. I wait until I've peeled a whole section up and then I put the washi tape down before I start working that area or right after I actually work the border is typically when I do it, which you'll see a little bit more of once we actually start working on this canvas. So washi tape is something that you're probably going to want to have on hand or the equivalent of washi tape. So now I'm going to use the Tic Tac containers because there's 24 of these and this only has 19 colors I believe. And if you look, most of them are just a couple bags worth of colors, except for uh, this one of the background colors have 13. So I, most of them will fit, and the leftover drills from this color that don't fit in a Tic Tac container will probably fit in one of the leftover containers I have, because there'll be five leftover if my mental math is cor correct, and it very rarely is. So I'm just going to load up these containers right now um, with my drills, get them all marked and ready to go, and I'll be right back. drills in my containers and organized. Um, all of the DMC numbers are on there as well as the symbols. If you were wondering what 
the answer to the age-old question of how many packs does a Tic Tac container hold was. The answer is six, so it will hold six of the small packs of 200 drills in one of these containers. Uh, I was able to fit them all in. I had um, one that needed two, and then the background color uh, needed three, because there were 13 packs of those drills. So that's all set to go, and I have put everything here on my desk that I personally need to get started diamond painting, and that is my washi tape. Uh, my pen and my tweezers. I don't use the tweezers to place the drills like we talked about before. I do use them though occasionally I will put a drill in the wrong place or I will have one fall out of my tray onto the sticky part of the canvas. These work great for getting them back up. That sticky, the adhesive on the canvas is extremely sticky so once you set that drill down it doesn't want to come back up ever. So you're going to need a pair of tweezers for mistakes and things. So my tweezers, my drill pen, my floral clay for inside of my drill pen, my tray, and I like this, the white tray with the spout, especially for pouring back into these tiny containers. That's going to be really important to have that little spout, but um, you can choose your favorite tray. The other thing that I find is really important to have are binder clips. I use binder clips to hold my canvas onto my light pad or if I'm working on the couch and I have a lap desk that I might secure them to. I get the great big ones. I do have some of the smaller ones. If you're working on like a light pad, a thin, a thin one, the smaller binder clips work, but I just keep a few of the big ones in my kit because they work on just about anything. Uh, even when I'm working here on my craft desk, sometimes I'll use a clip on the edge to, to hold a larger diamond painting in place so that it doesn't bend or move on me while I'm working. Now, the other couple things I wanted to show you for getting started and getting ready, they're not necessities, but they definitely make life a lot easier. And the first one is a light pad. Uh, you can get them, I won't say that they're inexpensive, but you can get a cheap one on Amazon for anywhere between $15 and $20. The one I use is very low end. Uh, it doesn't have an on and off switch. To turn it on, you plug it in. Uh, but it works, and that's the most important part. Now, like I said before, my eyes aren't the greatest anymore. So having this light pad um, made diamond painting so, so much easier for me. So the concept of this is you plug it in or turn it on, depending on if you have a nicer light pad than I do, and it turns on uh, and lights up. Now, when you put your canvas over it, you'll be able to see through the canvas and read those symbols a little clearer. Now, I'm going to show you uh, with a canvas that I'm already working on. If I, this one is printed pretty clearly, but without the light pad, this is what you see for the symbols. Um, when you're working on ones that are different colored, it can become very hazy. Uh, very hard to differentiate the the different symbols, especially if you have ones that work or that look a lot alike, like um, say an S and a dollar sign next to each other, especially if they're on the same background color, it can get really tough. So when you have the light pad and you turn it on, 
being able to see through that canvas and get the illumination from the bottom makes all of these symbols a lot clearer. So that one was not maybe the greatest one to show you on, so I will just go ahead and peel a section off of this one. So there we have it without the light. I'm going to turn it on. Now I don't know how well the video is picking this up, but for me personally, without the light pad, I'm squinting, I'm bending over, I'm sitting right on top of it to try and actually see what I'm doing. As soon as I put the light under it, I can see it from two feet away. I can tell from where I'm sitting that this is a percentage, that's a five, this is a three, that's a four. I could not tell you that without that light underneath it. So whether or not the video is actually catching the detail, this for me is my most valuable tool that I use when I diamond paint. I hate being in a place where the lighting is not good. Um, on top of that, I also I have two desk lights attached to my desk that I use to get a cross section of light so that shadows aren't cast while I'm working. Um, I probably don't need them, especially with the light pad. Uh, when I'm out of, and about in my car and I, I don't have this, um, I use that lighted pen like I showed you in the, the pen tutorial. So this is definitely, if you have the money, invest in one of these. I, I just, I can't tell you enough how much it makes life easier, uh, reduces eye strain, reduces back strain. It's just, it's worth every penny. So the last thing that you might want to consider for your workspace is uh, an easel of some sort. Now, my craft desk here is actually a drafting desk, so the whole top of it lifts up to a 45 or a little bit more degree angle. So I'm not leaning over the table when I work and getting strain in my, my back um, and pain in my back. This desk was a gift from my husband. It was not inexpensive, but he's a generous guy and he doesn't like to listen to me complain about my back. So if you can get a drafting table and have a dedicated workspace, that's great. If not, there are other solutions and I'm going to show you one. Uh, a lot of people work, and, and I do this too, they work at their couch watching TV. Maybe you get a lap desk or a TV tray. Uh, you find yourself hunching over if you're working at the kitchen table. This is a light pad stand. I got it on Amazon. It was, I believe, around $12. It was under $15. This actually allows you to place your light pad on it at several different angles. So it can be a real upright angle or a very sloped angle. This is very portable, so no matter where you're working, if you're working at the couch, if you're working at the kitchen table, it has this little thing here. You can adjust your work surface to uh, an incline that is comfortable for you. The important, uh, the important thing when you're crafting, when you're diamond painting, when you're doing anything that's recreational is not to cause additional strain on your body. This is supposed to be relaxing. It's supposed to be fun. It's not supposed to send you to the chiropractor's office or the doctor's office. So please, 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 find a way to work that is ergonomic and does not cause you back or neck strain or eye strain or gives you headaches. If you do find that any of those things are happening to you, take a break, walk around, 
grab some water to drink, and reevaluate your workstation. Now, I will put the link to the light pad, not this light pad because it's not available anymore, but a comparable one. Uh, the light pad will go on my blog, a link to that, um, as well as a link to this. There are also artist easels that you can get at Michael's, uh, Hobby Lobby, Walmart. They're not quite as adjustable as this one. I really, really liked this one, especially for the price. It was a great price for what it does. So definitely look into something like this. Um, so you've got your canvas prepped, cut up or scored or whatever you're going to do with it. Not, don't cut the canvas, you, the, the paper backing, cut, scored. You've got your drills inventoried, sorted in a box. You've got your washi tape, your drill pen, your tweezers, your pink wax, hang tack, Loctite, whatever you're going to put inside your pen, diamond tray, a couple of clips, clothespins, even the hang tack, something to secure your canvas in place we are good to go. In the next video, we'll start placing drills. I will show you how to get crisp edges around your diamond painting and how to checkerboard and basically how to get started and off and running. And from there on out, you've got the basics and you'll be doing it yourself. From there on out, I'm just gonna show you a couple of troubleshooting things. Uh, and some frequently asked questions and stuff like that, but you're almost there. You're almost diamond painting. So in, I will see you in the next video. Happy diamond painting.